a near drowning, getting beat up by a broomstick, and nearly suffocating in a real fire? And those are just things that happened on the sets of James Cameron movies. These sci-fi scenes left the actors shaking. The Alien franchise exists somewhere between science fiction and horror, blending unique futuristic ideas with plots ripped straight out of a slasher film. And Ridley Scott is apparently a director who will go to any lengths to get those terrifying shots. Case in point, in Scott's blockbuster prequel to Alien, 2012's Prometheus, during which a new group of explorers unearth terrifying monsters in a remote part of the galaxy, we're treated to some creepy extraterrestrial creatures designed to feast on the cast. In one sequence, a pair of scientists played by Sean Harris and Rafe Spall, come face to face with a cobra-like alien. Look at you. Look at you, baby. A few moments later, the alien proceeds to viciously attack and kill them. When the remaining crew arrives on the scene, they find their friend lying face first on the ground. They turn the body over, and the cobra unexpectedly shoots from his mouth, causing the others to scream in shock. According to a behind-the-scenes video available on the DVD, the crew rigged a dummy snake to a wire that they could pull on Scott's command, which would send it flying out of the corpse's mouth. Then, Scott warned the crew not to share the storyboards for the scene with the actors Kate Dickey and Idris Elba to capture their shock at the horrific moment. It worked. <laughs> Steven Spielberg's sci-fi classic about a man's obsession with aliens boasts some of the director's most iconic moments. From the intense chase across the countryside to the musical finale set at Devil's Tower, Close Encounters of the Third Kind remains an incredible cinematic extraterrestrial experience, replete with astonishing performances from Richard Dreyfuss and the late Melinda Dillon. Surprisingly, the most remarkable performance comes from an unlikely source, child actor Carrie Guffey, who was only three and a half years old when the movie was filmed. As the precocious Barry, Guffey believably conveys various emotions across his young face. In one particularly memorable sequence, he stumbles across a kitchen splattered with remnants of food and broken dishes. The camera lingers on his face in one long, unbroken take as the boy gazes at the unseen aliens off screen. At first, he looks frightened and confused. Then, his face morphs into a smile. It's wondrous to behold. Getting a three-year-old to believably convey a specific range of emotions is a huge challenge, so Spielberg deployed an assortment of tricks. To get the reaction for that specific scene, he had to give Guffy just a teensy little scare. I dressed up our makeup man as a gorilla. He took a step back and he gets completely... <gasps> Spielberg then had the man in the gorilla costume take off his mask. Guffy recognized him as a friend and broke out into a smile. And that's one take, you can't do that twice. After the wild success of The Hunger Games, Hollywood went on a quest to discover the next blockbuster young adult franchise. This led to a slew of book adaptations, and among these, The Maze Runner found its place in the spotlight, mainly due to its modest production budget and decent box office performance. The trilogy ended with the release of Maze Runner, The Death Cure, in 2018. In this concluding chapter, the characters persist in their mission to unearth a cure for the deadly flare virus. This virus transforms its unfortunate victims into aggressive and zombie-like beings called cranks. These cranks pose a constant and menacing threat within the dystopian backdrop of their post-apocalyptic world. Dylan O'Brien famously suffered a terrifying accident while filming a chase scene for the film, but there was another moment that caught both O'Brien and his co-star Thomas Brody Sangster off guard. During a promotional interview for the film, the actors shared a peculiar and unsettling experience involving a crank actor who stayed in character between takes. While they commended the actor for their dedication, both of them agree that it got a little unnerving, or as Brody Sangster put it, terrifying. James Cameron's demanding nature and relentless pursuit of perfection are legendary. It can create tension on set, but it's also led to some of the biggest blockbusters of all time. However, 1989's The Abyss pushed the limits of everyone involved. This production ranks among the most challenging in cinema history, worthy of its own unique film adaptation. A behind-the-scenes documentary from 1993 details the tumultuous filmmaking process and reveals that actor Ed Harris nearly drowned during a crucial scene. In the film, characters wear helmets filled with oxygenated perfluorocarbon, allowing them to dive deep underwater. In a clunky dive suit, Harris had to hold his breath while being pulled by cables, but on the third take, he almost drowned because he was given an upside-down regulator that flooded his lungs with water. Took another big breath, got water back in my lungs, and for a split second, I really thought I was a goner. This incident left Harris understandably shaken. Luckily, everyone made it through the grueling shoot and crafted an astonishing piece of science fiction. Despite not matching Cameron's other blockbusters at the box office, 
The Abyss remains a remarkable sci-fi action and romance blend with top-notch effects and a timely message about preserving the Earth that feels all the more relevant today. The Fifth Element offers the kind of eccentric, visually stunning, quirky entertainment typical of a Luc Besson production and has gone on to enjoy cult status among genre enthusiasts. Centered around the quest to find and protect a mysterious element that holds the key to saving Earth from an impending cosmic threat, Fifth Element follows a cab driver named Corbin Dallas, who becomes the unlikely hero tasked with safeguarding the enigmatic Li Lu from a group of malevolent beings known as the Mangalores, led by Zorg. Action-packed and epic in scope, the 1997 sci-fi extravaganza contains plenty of memorable moments, notably a significant bit in which Zork faces away from a massive explosion, his face expressionless, while his henchman, played by musician Tricky, ducks an alarm behind him. Well, Tricky's reaction was unplanned and perfectly natural, according to Oldman. We didn't tell him how big the explosion was going to be. In addition to the massive explosion, a gust of wind apparently came through just then and directed the heat back at the two actors, partially melting Oldman's plastic headpiece and, well, terrifying Tricky. And Tricky soiled <laughs> his costume. <laughs> In 1985, Robert Zemeckis and producer Steven Spielberg introduced Back to the Future, a tale of teenager Marty McFly accidentally altering his parents' destiny by time traveling. This hit film birthed two sequels, Back to the Future Part 2, where Marty journeys to the future to aid his kids, and Back to the Future Part 3, which sends him into the Wild West to save Doc from Mad Doc Tannen. Back to the Future Part 3 blends western and sci-fi genres, and thus pays homage to classic cowboy films and genre conventions. In a pivotal scene, Marty is pursued by Mad Dog's gang and strung up by his neck, leading to an unexpected real-life mishap. In his 2002 memoir Lucky Man, Fox recalls the stunt gone awry. Initially, he was to stand on a box for a close-up while a stunt double performed in the wide shots. Unsatisfied with the scene, the crew decided to have Fox hang for real assuming he could position his hand correctly to avoid suffocation. While this approach worked initially, on the third take, Fox miscalculated and lost consciousness as his carotid artery was blocked. He dangled unconscious for a few moments before Zemeckis intervened. There is no word on whether the scene in the film is where the accident occurred, but the story does lend more terror to the moment. Long before Denis Villeneuve adapted Frank Herbert's classic sci-fi series Dune to critical acclaim on the big screen, David Lynch took a stab at the story with the peculiar but entertaining 1984 version. Featuring a cast including Kyle MacLachlan, Francesca Annis, Patrick Stewart, Sean Young, Alicia Witt, and Sting, Dune 84 is an ambitious, albeit outlandish, piece of pulpy sci-fi. Lynch's vision left its fair share of scars for all involved, quite literally in the case of German actor Jürgen Prochnow. In a dramatic scene, Prochnow's character, Duke Atreides, meets his demise after a failed attempt to assassinate Baron Harkonnen using poisonous gas from a tooth in his mouth. According to Empire, Lynch attached a device to the side of Prochnow's face to produce green smoke for the shot. Several tests were carried out to guarantee the performer's safety. However, when filming commenced, the smoke caused first and second degree burns on Prochnow's cheek, leaving visible scars for the rest of his career. What of my life? While filming James Cameron's juggernaut Terminator 2 Judgment Day, Linda Hamilton came to blows with a co-star named Ken Gibble, better known as the weird orderly who licks her face right before she bashes his face in with a broomstick. Well, the bloody beatdown wasn't all movie magic. In fact, according to the commentary track, Hamilton had grown frustrated with the previous scene that required Gibble to punch her in the stomach with the baton. Gibble kept pulling his punches, necessitating several takes meaning Hamilton had to fall hard on the floor over and over again. Naturally, she got a little tired of the endless takes and became frustrated with Gibble's lack of conviction. When it came time for Sarah to make her escape, Hamilton showed her co-star how to land a proper hit. Cameron laughs about the incident on the film's commentary track, noting that each shot delivered to Gibble's face was real, as was the pure terror on his face. Real. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> real. <laughs> and real. <laughs> Cameron added, I had a heck of a time getting him to do another take. Fortunately, the first take worked just fine. I think Linda was a little more method than he expected. 
Stanley Kubrick unquestionably created remarkable movies, including 2001 A Space Odyssey, The Shining, and Eyes Wide Shut. He was also infamous for being a perfectionist who employed numerous takes to capture the ideal shot. Invariably, these efforts paid off, especially from an artistic perspective. A notable example is the legendary scene in A Clockwork Orange, where doctors at a rehabilitation clinic use lid locks to keep Alex's eyes open, subjecting him to a barrage of sex and violence to attempt to quell his destructive urges. As actor Malcolm McDowell revealed in a 2019 essay, filming this scene was as painful as it appears on screen. He said, When we shot it, the lid locks kept sliding off my eyelids and scratching my cornea. When the anesthetic wore off, I was in such pain I was banging my head against a wall. But Stanley was mainly concerned about when he would be able to get his next shot. It's fair to say that genuine pain infuses McDowell's performance, as you witness Alex taped to a chair with his face contorted in terror. Did you think we'd exclude aliens from this list? Another challenging James Cameron production, the critically acclaimed blockbuster sequel to Ridley Scott's Alien, faced its fair share of disasters on set. During an intense rescue, the Armored Personnel Carrier, or APC, carrying the team is hit by a wayward flamethrower, causing a fire that nearly kills everyone inside. Bill Paxton, in a behind-the-scenes documentary, described the mishap. The crew intentionally lit parts of the set on fire, but the molded plastic used in designing the set also began to burn. Conditions became so severe that Jeanette Goldstein, who portrayed Vasquez, struggled to breathe. Paxton initially thought she was ad-libbing lines, until he tried to take a breath. And there literally, literally being no oxygen, just like <sighs> And then I realized, oh my God, she's, she's not in character. She's suffocating like I am. Apparently, the same thing happened again in the next take. The next time you watch Aliens, pay close attention to this sequence and observe the genuine panic that unfolds when the fire erupts, because it's undeniably real. It's kind of like what you feel like when you hear about chemical weapons and so on and so forth, what it would be like. Just, and you just, you suck in, there's like nothing other than fire in your lungs. 